Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Rebecca. But if you're already subscribed, welcome back. It has been such a long time since I filmed a sit-down video like this because I was really, really busy with my exams. Since I have just sat for my first professional exam part 2, the experience is still very fresh in my mind. I decided to film this video for you guys just to give you a little insight on how the examination is going to be like. So as usual, I'll be sharing about the structure of the examination, how I study, my study routine and also some tips on how I pull through the examination period. First up, I'll be talking about the structure of the examination. So as usual, we have both theory and also OSCE. However, it's a little bit different if you compare it to the first professional exam part 1. This is because this is an open book examination. So the percentage changed up a little bit. So for theory this time, it holds 80% which is a large amount because in part 1, it was only 60%. And for OSCE, this time it holds only 20%. This time it's really different because both theory and OSCE is no longer a separate component. As long as we pass more than 50%, we are good to go. This is just due to the changes made due to the COVID situation. Okay, so I'll be talking about the theory part first before proceeding to the OSCE. For theory, we had three papers. SEQ and OSCE was held on the first day and EMQ was held on the second day. For SEQ, we had only one hour and we had four questions to answer. That four questions are subdivided into more questions. So I would say one question would subdivide into four to five more questions. And for SEQ, anything can come out. We were thinking, oh, most probably they're gonna ask about CNS or MSK or reproduction because that's what we learned in semester four and that's the newest. But we are wrong because anything can come out. There were a lot of questions regarding the pathophysiology of a disease. Answering four questions in one hour is crazy. I managed to finish it on time, but I didn't get to double check my answers but it's nothing too unanswerable next is OSPI so OSPI we also had one hour and we had six questions to answer the six questions are subdivided into multiple questions so for me this time OSPI is way better than SEQ for part two it's more clinically related anatomy so it wouldn't give you random anatomy questions that are not clinically significant one of the questions was they gave us an x-ray of a mid-arm fracture so they ask us what nerve is involved in that damage and what you can see if that nerve is damaged. So something like that. Also, I realized that it's very OSCE kind of question. They will ask you what is the clinical sign that you will see? What is the physical sign that you will see? So whatever you expect to see in OSCE, you translate it and write it in OSPI, if that makes sense. OSPI was very different from FPP1, but it's still better than my SEQ. So coming to the last part of theory is the EMQ paper. So for EMQ, it's crazy because we only had 45 minutes and we had to answer six questions that are subdivided into five to six more questions. Most of us, we were really nervous because we thought that we wouldn't have enough time. But I'm so thankful because the questions were the easiest out of all of the other theory papers. Even though it's 45 minutes, I still had time to double check. So the questions are set according to systems or disease or either medication. For example, the main title is medication for gastric. For the sub questions, they will ask you regarding antacids, PPI, H2 antagonists. Let's say you didn't study about the medications for gastric and that whole section is about that. That's a little bit risky because you might lose all five marks. So overall for theory, I would say that it's okay. It wasn't super tough, but it wasn't super easy as well. So right now, I'll be talking about OSCE or also known as VOSCE. We had two stations per day. In total, we had four stations. The three components that we were tested on were follow-up, info giving and also history taking. So for me, OSCE has always been the less nerve-wracking part of my examination. So I'm more nervous for my theory part. As long as you practice a lot of times for OSCE, you should be good to go because there's only so much that could come out for OSCE, you know. The first day, I got two different stations. So the first station, I had a patient that complains of a headache. The diagnosis that I got was migraine. Second case, I got follow-up for hypothyroidism. The patient complains of hypothyroidism due to the medication. Second day, I also had two different cases. So for the first case, the patient complained of an upper abdominal pain and I diagnosed the patient with GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. For my second case, I got info giving for G6PD deficiency. Not everyone in your batch will get the same diagnosis. So for example, for the first day, I got a patient that complains of a headache, right? 
and my diagnosis was migraine. But my other friends got subdural hemorrhage, extradural hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, stroke. Chief complaint is the same, but the diagnosis is different. I was taken aback a little bit for my fourth station, which is my last station. This is because we didn't practice anything about G6PD deficiency. As long as you have that knowledge that you learn for your theory paper, you should be okay. So make sure don't throw away your theory knowledge because you would need them for your OSCE stations. So that's it. So right now, I'll be talking about my study routine. If you guys watched my previous video regarding my first professional exam part 1, you would know that my study routine is really, really, really strict. And also, I didn't get enough sleep. I wasn't exercising and stuff like that. This time, it's the total opposite. I think I already had some experience regarding the exam preparation and I also know how to chill and by chilling for a day or two, it wouldn't mean that I would fail. Also, I feel that this exam preparation was way less hectic is because so we had hospital posting before our exam. We were already kind of revising during hospital postings. Okay, so here is my study routine. 7.30 to 8 a.m. is the time for me to wake up and also to freshen up. 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. will be my first study session. 12.30 to 1 p.m. will be my lunch break. 1.30 to 5.30 p.m. will be my second study session 5 30 to 7 p.m would be the time for me to exercise and also to have my dinner 7 to 7 30 would be my nap time 8 p.m to 12 a.m would be my third study session however two weeks before my examination i slept 1 to 2 a.m so that's my study session so minimum i study about 10 hours per day and maximum i'll study about 12 hours per day so this really depends on my mood as well just to be honest with you guys even though i got a good amount of sleep I got to exercise, I got to take my naps and I also got to take my day off. I still feel very very guilty and I'm still learning how to control that guilt. So coming to the last part of this video, I'll be sharing to you guys how I studied and some tips on how I pulled through the crazy period. For my first professional exam part 2, I definitely changed up my studying pattern. Instead of focusing on my lecture notes like I did in part 1, I did a lot more of questions. My lecture notes, I did finish it. I think I went through one and a half times. Question wise, I did a lot of past year questions with my friends and I also did a lot of questions from the question bank. I also did a lot of cases. Question, cases and lecture notes. That's how I studied for my part 2 examination. The only reason why I managed to do so much is because I keep track of my time. So this is really really crucial because there's a lot for you to study and there's a lot of materials for you to go through. So if you don't keep track of your time, you would definitely slack and you won't be able to finish whatever you intended to do. I downloaded two apps that keep me on track. So the first one would be my exam calendar so I know how many days I have left to the exam and also when should I end my preparation for the exam. The second app, it will be the Forest app. This application uses the Pomodoro concept. So if you don't know, Pomodoro is basically like a timer for you to strictly study. One thing I really really like about the app is that I get to plant trees. It's very fulfilling to see your garden filled with trees. Yeah, so to be honest, even though I plan my studies ahead, there are some days that I feel super lazy so I won't be able to finish the lecture notes that I want to go through or something like that. To survive Vosky or Oski, the only thing you need is constant practice. I have a group of friends who I practice Oski with and they are really really helpful, super super helpful, super smart people. If I'm not mistaken, two months before the examination, we had one session per week. One month prior to the examination, we had practice almost every day. It's crazy because one session would take up to two hours. We really practice according to the real examination. We practice it through teams so everybody will be in a group and then two examiners will leave the group and call us separately so it's really exactly like the real examination and this really helped me because when I was doing the real Vosky I didn't really feel nervous because it was just like any other practice. Practice is key, keep on practice, practice and practice. I only managed to pull through the crazy study session is because I manage my stress well. One thing that I get a lot from the people around me is that I look very stress free and my life is free of stress. Hell nah, that's not the reality. The reason why I appear to be stress free is because I manage my time well. I took a day off every single week and that really helped me reset and refresh my mind. So I take a day off every Saturday so that's when I edit my YouTube videos I go out with my sisters I go and have lunch with my friends or my sisters also for this time I managed to exercise so I will either jog or walk together with my friend at the stadium nearby about a day or two before the examination a lot of my friends they were posting about how 
stressed they were and also the countdown to the exam and that really stressed me out what I did was to either switch off my Instagram or not to watch their stories so it's no one in particular <laughs> if you guys are my friend and you guys are watching this please don't feel offended so yeah i will only watch the stories from the people who are not in the medical field or in my same batch because i know they will be posting about all of this countdown stuff so that's how I manage my stress before the exam. That's it for this video. I know it's a very lengthy one, but I just want to give you guys an insight on how the FPP part 2 is going to be like. So I hope that it's really, really beneficial for you guys. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope that you really gained something from it. If you have any question or any suggestion, please comment down in the section below. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!